All the hype in the sustainable off-grid energy community is primarily based on solar power. But there is another source of power that a lot of people don't really think about when they imagine the ultimate off-grid camping setup. And that is the power of the wind. So in today's video, we're gonna test this wind catcher by Kydex to see how much energy we can harness from the power of wind. So this is where this little box, this tiny motor, and these blades come into play. This Kydex wind catcher is essentially a state-of-the-art windmill that is portable weighing in at only 26 pounds with all of its components and comes with all of the equipment that you need to set it up, including anchors, as well as this ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket. And one of the first things that came to mind when I saw this wind catcher was that I'm a little skeptical about the, the production quality of some of the parts. You see all of the major parts for the Kydex kit are 3D printed. And I was worried about that when I first saw the product, but as I started to learn more about the wind catcher, the more I'm actually excited to see the 3D print capability. The parts feel durable. They don't feel cheap and they don't feel like they're made from a low quality resin. So if for some reason you end up breaking this uh, pretty robust feeling component, you can download the plans and print another one from a 3D printer. Before I get into the test and review, I do wanna let you know that KiteX sent me this windmill to make this video. They did not pay me any money and they have no control over what I say about the product. So I'm gonna start off with something that I want to make sure that everybody who is interested in this windmill knows off the bat. Although it's not complicated to put it together, it will be a little time consuming. There are several ropes and carabiners, lanyards and tie downs that are all required to put this thing together. And although you could by all means tear down and set this thing up at every campsite every night, I believe it is best suited for an off-grid location where you're gonna spend a few days, perhaps a week, where you wanna be able to get that continuous input from wind power that is available 24 hours a day versus a solar panel that's probably only gonna give you ideal power for five to eight hours a day, depending on the season and the angle of the sun. I mentioned earlier that the system is lightweight, but if you have this set up in a location where you're getting at least 12 to 13 miles per hour of steady state winds, you can get up to about 4,800 watt hours or 4.8 kilowatt hours per day from the wind catcher. So here's the problem that I'm gonna have with this setup in my location. I'm relatively isolated by the woods here. I do have an open field behind me that gives me the opportunity to set this thing up and see what kind of power I can get from it. So the main problem with the area that I have is the prevailing winds are only around five miles per hour and I am surrounded by trees. So let me get the wind catcher set up and then I can hook it up to various power stations and see what kind of output I can get from it. Because there are plenty of videos on the Kite X YouTube channel on the setup of this device, I'm gonna go ahead and skip to a setup windmill. And if there are any things that I noticed that I wanna share with you, I'll only include those in the next few minutes. Today I have 10 mile an hour wind, steady state, and gusting up to 20 miles per hour. And I've been bringing in anywhere from 30 to almost 200 watts from the wind catcher. I'm actually really satisfied with this result. I wasn't actually expecting to get much power from the wind catcher because in my region there is not enough wind or usually not a lot of wind. But in today's case, I've got plenty of wind and I'm putting a lot of power back into the Delta II Max. I'm super glad to see this thing running and this is at really just a 10 mile per hour prevailing wind. One observation that I have about the wind catcher that I didn't really get from any of the other videos that I saw is once you have this thing set up, as the wind starts to change direction, the wind catcher will actually straighten itself out so that it is in the correct orientation. So there's nothing really holding the wind catcher 
from rotating as it needs to, almost like a windsock. So right now, it's facing this way because the wind is prevailing that way. So that's super useful, meaning that I don't have to worry about changing this thing once it's set up in its position. One gripe I have about the interface with the wind catcher, and I'm positive that Kydex will resolve this in the next several months with a dedicated app, is that once I let my screen time out, I go in, I reopen my screen, and then now I have to reconnect to the wind catcher. It's not super annoying, but the everyday consumer is not gonna wanna have to reconnect to Wi-Fi repeatedly. They probably just want one app that they connect to and then do the settings and then maybe access the app as necessary. Hopefully an app comes out, either iOS or Android or both, making this essentially a perfect consumer grade product. All right guys, so I definitely don't recommend standing under the wind catcher while it's spinning, but I feel like as long as I'm careful with what I'm doing, that I won't get smacked in the head. But the risk that I was worried about was maybe the blades were close enough to the ground that they would be hitting me. That is something to keep in mind. At your 20 mile per hour wind, that blade's moving pretty fast and you just don't want to get anybody under it. Do not try this at home, but if the wind is blowing, the blades are definitely high enough that they're not gonna hit you in the head. But ultimately, I just recommend staying away from the blades while they're moving, because they are moving radially very quickly. So I didn't really have any major problems with the installation, but there are three things I wanted to point out that I learned from this installation that I don't wanna say they weren't covered in Kydex's video, but they weren't as apparent to me until I actually tried to get this thing installed. And the first one is, it did come with the ratchet that allows it to dig into the ground, but the composition of the soil plays a major role in that. And the soil here has quite a bit of rocks. So I ended up using my impact driver. That way I could kind of push through or break through those rocks while vibrating essentially this thing into the ground. My second major observation is that Kydex put a lot of effort into designing this product. And these blades, when I was standing it up, occasionally I rubbed them on the ground. And so my recommendation there is, and I don't know if this is possible uh, or an issue due to the engineering, but take the ends of those blades and bevel them so that when they are facing the ground that they're level with the ground and that would just be to cut off essentially a little bit of a triangle at the end of the blade there that'll make them more level with the ground and so when they impact the ground if you're not exactly careful then you won't cause any damage to the blades so after thinking about beveling the edges a little bit i realized that that wouldn't exactly work because if you beveled this edge a little bit and then rotate it the 120 degrees to the opposite end over here then that bevel would be the opposite direction that you'd want. So maybe consider something like a point in the center where you have essentially like the tip of a sword or even a rounded or something like that. Because I believe that after repetitive setup and teardown of the wind catcher, you may run into some issues with the ends of those blades getting dinged up a little more than you expect. So another major observation that I have about the overall design of the Kydex is that this cable comes out of the bottom of this pole. And so this anchor has a little notch cut out that protects the cable from getting smashed by the end of the pole. So my recommendation to Kydex would be to maybe put this joint or this outlet in the bottom of the pole somewhere so that if it's standing up, it's not pinching the cable. That'll save potentially a lot of problems for users who potentially lose control of this device in windy conditions while they're trying to set it up. The Wi-Fi app for Windcatcher isn't super complicated. Assuming that you hook everything up properly, in my case, I have the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max set up, which isn't in their menu of predetermined items. However, I did use the setup for the EcoFlow Delta 2, which has lower specifications, therefore I'm not gonna mess up my Delta II Max by using that setup. However, when I first set it up, because I didn't do it properly, I did get a few system faults, simply unplugging the system and plugging it back in, using the app properly, I got everything set up good to go. In order to stop the wind catcher, you do need to access this app. And currently I have it shut off, and even with the wind catcher on idle or off, it still spins just a little bit in the wind, but it spins a lot less 
than if you have it activated. If you plan to take the wind catcher down and the wind is still blowing, be careful not to smash the, the blades into the ground. Another thing I wanna do is release the kickstand from its position. And because the wind catcher has been essentially rotating as needed, I'm gonna line it up so that it has two of the augers on one side and then two on the other side. That way when I take the tension off of that one, the wind catcher will simply fall forward as needed. But to lower it, I am gonna do a controlled lower and I'm simply just gonna ease up. And I wanna be very gentle because that lower blade right now is down. And in fact, there we go. I wanna try to time it so that as that lower blade is not facing directly down, then I can touch the ground just like that. The Danish engineers at Kydex have done a lot of improvements over some of the original versions of this. One of the main improvements that I've noticed is all of the connections are color coded. So you have the blue rope goes to the blue anchor point. The white ropes go to the white anchor points. Everything is color coded. That's a very good touch point to help prevent you from being confused as you assemble the device. So when I first assembled this thing, I wasn't paying too much attention and I didn't tighten up this segment right here. And I'm, I'm saying that because I was worried even setting it up that the cables were a little too tight, but once I took all the slack, it really tightened up everything in the propeller. So now that I've taken the tension off of here as much as possible, I can easily just release the props and this will allow me to take more tension once the props are released from this giant nut right here i can just take as much tension as i need to off of the blades to release all these cables based on my experience today with the wind catcher i believe that i have come to a conclusion at least from my opinion on whether or not the solar panel is obsolete and the truth is i believe that the best solution for an off-grid setup is gonna be using a combination of something like a windmill in addition to those solar panels, particularly if you live in a windy climate where you have the sun shining all day and then you augment that solar capability with something like a windmill. Kai-X recently shared in an interview that they are developing a full-size application that would be perfect for an off-grid home. And in a place that has very consistent wind, I'm not sure how much power they're gonna get from that. But even this one at just over 10 miles per hour produces a very steady 200 watts. If you love off-grid technology, please give this video a thumbs up and then watch this video to check out my latest adventures.